Hello! Hello, and welcome to a very special bi-week episode from the Game Brewer crew we have lovingly called the Game View Podcast. Uh, we will dissect a movie that is based on, loosely or otherwise, a video game, uh, and give it a rating with our handy ra- Game Brew rating system. TM. Trademark. That's trademarked. No one else can use it. If you are out there and you find somebody else using the you game, you tell us. You let us know. System, you let us know, and we will send them a sue. And and well, we'll no, just we'll really send mad. them. We'll, we'll shake our fists. We'll send them a slightly angrily. No, it's not. It's gonna yeah. be like no, a. Could, could you not? Just please just don't. Just like hey, like, stop, man. It's like whenever your brother's like punching you, or not touching you. He's like, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Um. But uh, anyway, hey, do you remember that time when there was a worldwide martial arts tournament with 10 opponents from five countries and also you beat up a car? I mean, that's not this, though. Yeah, it didn't happen in Street Fighter the movie in 1994 either. <laughs> I'm Dan Rotz, and I'm joined by whoever. <laughs> uh, that's me. I'm whoever. <laughs> it's Chris. Chris is whoever this week. Uh, <laughs> hey, hi. Hey, hi. Hi, Chris. Hello. Tell me, Chris, how you feeling, man? How you doing? Uh, well, so I just ate a little bit of spicy food, so I'm a little sweaty. Okay. Nice. Uh, but generally pretty good. That's yeah. pretty, that's yeah. pretty nice. Just in general. Good. Yep. I like spicy food. I mean, I, we went I'm kind of a sweaty guy though, too. That happens. We yeah. went to a white people restaurant the other day and they had something that was spicy. It was supposed to be spicy on it. It was spicy. It was like, yeah, it was as spicy as mayonnaise on white bread. I mean, like it was... Oof. Not spicy yeah, at all. That's, uh, that's up there. Me, me named Dan. Me likey the spicy. So my heart <laughs> doesn't like it, but you know, Which whatever. Soul does. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay, Chris. I'm doing okay. I, I didn't ask, but I know. But I just wanted to let you know. But that. I, yeah, you're good though. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. I'm fine. Everything is. Everything also, is awesome. Yeah. It's not this movie though. So we watched uh, we watched uh, Street Fighter, the 1994 version. Separately. Separately. We watched it. So actually, pause. There are two 1994 Street Fighters. There is. There's another there's one. There's an anime there. film, too. Oh, there's an anime from 1994? Yeah. And Didn't it's you? actually... So we actually watched it after that. Oh, yeah? Uh, Was it and better? it's actually pretty good. Okay. Yeah. It's much... It's I, Spoiler alert. It's better than what we watched. <laughs> what? I find that hard to believe. Um, but let me just read you the synopsis of uh, of what this is. This is from I'm, well, it's from M, M. Phoenix. Uh, Colonel William Guile leads an army of soldiers into the country of Shadowloo to find traces to lead him to find traces to lead him to General M. Bison, who has captured many people, including three missing sh- soldiers. Hold on one second. I got to go to the actual. <laughs> that was bad. bad. That's uh, bad. That's probably go. what it's on the movie. This is really what it says: <laughs> Colonel Guile and various other martial arts heroes fight against the tyranny of dictator M. Bison and his cohorts. Uh, yeah. So we watched that, that happens. Yeah, we watched uh, Street Fighter, and this is the result. Uh, all right. So first impressions of the movie, Chris. What you uh, think of the movie? It. It seemed like they. Made a lot of mistakes making they, this movie. <laughs> they made some. They made some mistakes, but like in general, did you enjoy your time with the movie? Like, did you like? Did you in, like have? You I was like, kind of okay with like the beginning of it. By the end, I yeah. was kind of like, okay, this is. I'm ready for this to be done now. <laughs> there, I had so last we watched Doom last time, and do you remember how like I said when yeah. I was watching Doom, I was like in my brain, I was like, I remember this being better than it is. This yep. is. I had the opposite. Of, uh, it was better than you remember it like being? i remember it being god awful and just being a terrible movie but so but like i think now, it also depends on like if you watched it a lot as a child it might get some um how does allison say it? No- nostalgia nostalgia uh, nostalgia yeah. um might give you some of that feeling but like it doesn't hold no, up well it doesn't hold up well but it was just i thought i thought it was hilarious like, there were some I really think, funny moments. There are some really funny moments. I think Zangief is possibly yes, the, be- the best. He's part. the saving <laughs> grace of this. No, see, like Zangief and Raul, Raul Julia. Julia. Raul yeah. Julia is amazing in this. Yep. I think all of the like secondary actors in this movie, like the secondary the people that aren't actors, are great. Um, Gray, I'm well, drinking. No. Uh, I'm drinking a, a strawberry. Um, 
a, 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 a margarita. Strawberry margarita is what I'm drinking. This is. I the guess way. I'm going to drink this red potion. Truly classic lime margarita style hard stuff. Margaritas. We're doing margaritas. Hey, margaritas. <laughs> I mean, it, this isn't a. This isn't. This is. Listen, the other po- the other podcast we do is a beer and video game podcast. Yeah, there's no brew involved. There's in this no game brew view. in this at all. This is just game view. This is the game view. Look at the logo in the corner. It says game view. <laughs> I've adjusted it to be so. Um, yeah, I mean, I could make a red potion drink. I do. I think that would be fun to have like a D and D party and like make different types of potion. Uh, actually, we've we've had a Renaissance fair party. Oh yeah. Like so, when we couldn't go to Renfest during yeah. the pandemic, we had a backyard Renfest at oh, um, our friend Grant's house. Nice. So like we had axe throwing there, and like we all dressed up. Nice. Uh, and our friends Brian and Geraldine made potions, and they were the potion sellers. Nice. Mm, <laughs> get a potion. Um, but uh. <laughs> But yes, yes, great. Anyways, yes, back perfect. to Street Fighter. Uh, but back to Street Fighter. It's uh, I I thought it was really enjoyable. I thought it was I, a fun ride. It was a fun ride to go on. Even there though were it, some parts that I enjoyed, but there were a lot of parts that I. It was mostly when um, when when uh, JCVD was uh was speaking. Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically, anytime. I mean, I don't know if you... <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> I mean, apparently, whenever they were filming this movie, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme was a huge problem. Like Probably because he was doing all the cocaine. Like, he was doing all the drugs. He was, like, not showing up. He was hooking up with set. Kylie. <laughs> I don't think he was. No, yep. he cheated on his wife with oh, Kylie. Oh, really? During that, yeah. Which is hilarious because everyone, like, everyone had a much better reaction to Kylie Minogue on set than they did to Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, because she's probably, um, like, super nice. I mean, yeah, it's Kylie Minogue. I'm sure she's great. Um, but let's just go over the plot a little bit. Basically, there's... Uh, in this movie, there's uh, Ra- Raul Julia. Raul. It's Raul, not Raul. We keep saying Raul. It's Raul. Raul Julia. Um, is M. Bison. Is M. Bison, who's a dictator... Basically, he's like a warlord, and he's been... And Shadaloo's a country, not a company. Yep, yep. Shadaloo is a country that they're in, um, and they have to take... And he's basically, like, trying to take it over. He's trying to take over the world, and he's... he's... But he's starting with Shadaloo, because he wants to make... uh... Bisontonia, or Bison... Bisonopolis? Bisonopolis is the... the, uh is the name of the city but he so, so Max by Sonia. <laughs> by Sonia. <laughs> uh and um yeah so they're doing so he's trying to take it over and in doing so he kidnaps a bunch of aid workers from Shadow. I believe the number was 63 63 aid workers which it didn't look like that when they were in the hole it was more like 22 no. um and and he wanted he wanted to trade them for 20 billion dollars 20 billion dollars his uh, that was very much like a, a Doctor Evil moment. It was like for twenty billion dollars. Um, I'm sure that was a lot. I mean, let, we can go find out how much that was in in today's money. Well, let's, um, I mean, we have the internet, so yeah. Uh, uh, inflation uh, calculator. <laughs> well, yeah, Chris. While you do that, um, the, um, but yeah, I mean, it was, uh, and so you know, hilarity ensues. Uh, basically, there's this uh, organization, um. Uh, that uh, comes in to stop him. Uh, not it's the Allied Nations, not con- to be confused with the United Nations. Right. Uh, so, so twenty billion dollars is like forty billion dollars today. Okay. Yeah. It's so it's still. I mean, I mean that's a lot of money, but it's not. It's not. It's not a lot of money. It's a people have it's, that. It's <laughs> people have that. There's oligarchs that have. Um, this much thing, so oligarchs uh, like Jeff Bezos, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, allied, uh, yeah, and the allied nations led by Colonel William Guile. So, first, we've got M. Bison. This is where we're introduced to M. Bison, who is played by Raul Julia. Who his method for getting into character number one, he brought his whole family with him, so like he was like, Raul did? yeah, he like, he, like him and his kids and his wife were there. Uh, well, this was the shooting. last movie he did before he died. It was because he had stomach cancer, so he had just had but like. I think he died from a stroke. I think. Did I? I think it was yeah complications from it, but the, but basically he, 
was there working on it with his whole family because he had just undergone treatment. So they couldn't like really. So he was like, you know, holding back as far as the physical stuff goes. So they did. A, they saved a lot of the. They did a lot of like the low, lo, less intense, like and in talking scenes beforehand. Um, but. Uh, but whenever he was um, whenever he was doing the role, um, he tried to incorporate and mimic a lot of the different traits of different dictators so like the like is that where the 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 cape flip came from yeah like all of that was so good it's so good (laughs) because that was all that was all benito mussolini stuff like all of his hand gestures and things he would do ah yeah that makes all benito mussolini um he would he would basically walk around like joseph stalin that's why he was like always very straight up and top like up top and uh pablo escobar uh, and Adolf Hitler were some of the dictators that he covers up because he like had all the art stuff, like his room, his room with all of the M Bison art and like yes. the things with his fa- and like, like the his- Napoleon M Bison and yeah, oh so yeah. good, so great. Um, and if- and then we have Colonel Guile, who's basically n- nothing. He's he um he was supposed to be from the United States. Right. That's why he has like the USA. He did not testing. sound like he was Well, yeah, because it's Jean Claude Van Damme. I don't understand the Jean Claude Van Damme stuff. It's not the nineties anymore. And it's like I don't know why people like Jean Claude Van Damme. I mean, it was supposed to, I think mostly because of blood sport, but like the dude couldn't act to save his life. It was not bad. at all. Like not even And a they spent bit. I think I was reading somewhere that they spent like eight million dollars on just him, and it was a thirty-five million dollar budget. Yeah, a lot of the money for the budget went to him and Raul Julia, and then they had to like. That's why a lot of the actors, like you had Kylie Minogue, uh, John Claude Adam, um, and Raul Julia, like, were the yeah, big like names. a ton, of, a ton of uh, a ton of no and names, and then all the rest. Yeah, the rest of everybody was um, at the time no names. We'll get to that. Right. Yeah, we'll get to that later. So uh, basically, we're introduced to that. Uh, uh, Jean-Claude Van... Colonel Guile flips off uh, uh, Raul Julia's M. Bison. Of course, he's just like, why will you not meet me on the field? And we're also introduced to Carlos Blanca in the beginning, who... Really annoying that he's like... His name is Carlos Blanca, but they call him Charlie. And I'm Charlie. Like, That's we'll not his name. For you. Charlie. Charlie, we're gonna come for you. We're coming for you, Charlie. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. We're coming for you. He's not. I don't know. Arnold. I can't even do his accent because only he it? can. And then, um. <laughs> and then we've also got uh, Kylie Minogue's Cami, which we've said several times. Mm-hmm. Um, but Valiant Ming Na by... Wen as Chun Li. She's not Chun Li yet. I mean, she's great, but she's not Chun Li yet. Because she's still just reporter lady, you know. But she she is Chun Li. Yeah, like, she's Chun Li Zan. Uh, but but, but Ming Na Wen's awesome. She really is. She this actually is, did a pretty good job. She did. She did a good job. She. Uh, I think there was an interview she did where she said she talked to George Clooney because it's 1994. So uh, this ER. Before, so ER. This is also before she was uh, before she was Mulan. Oh yeah, way before she was Mulan. But she had just started being an actress on ER at the time. She was like, so she was in there with George Clooney uh, mm-hmm. before he was huge. Um, and basically, I think she talked to him and said she was worried because the movie did so poorly. She was worried that it was going to have a negative effect on her career. He was fine. Um, it's also why she left like uh, ER in like the first like six episodes or something in that year because she was busy filming this and she went off to do other stuff. And then she came back like three seasons later. I'm watching ER right now, which is why I know that. Um, she was apparently also on As the World Turns. She was, yes. Um. So yeah, Ming Na Wen, and she's also uh, joined by uh, her two uh, by Balrog, who's there? Who's usually bad? Usually bad. But he's a good. He's a he's a good. He's like a camera guy. And uh, Honda, who's there too, who, who who is Samoan in this and not Japanese. That's that's true. Well, isn't that <laughs> is not is that not the character in the game? I could have sworn Honda was always Japanese. Hold on. Let's well let's let's uh, let's do some research so we don't say so. M Honda E Honda E Honda E Honda Street Fighter. Boom. Let's find out. 
Yeah, he represents Japan alongside Ryu. Okay, so then, yeah, they just changed that completely, which is a thing that happens. And and then did, like, every time he was, like, on the, the screen, they would do, like, a Hawaiian, like, little Yeah, it was, like, it was, like, you had lots of, like, the steel guitars. And, yeah, but, um, like, the slidey, like, yeah. um, And then, uh, who else? Uh, you, you have Cammy, and then you also had uh, Greg Rainwater as T-Hawk. Um, made no sense. Well, I mean, you know, T Hawk doesn't. He is, but yet they had the guy that's a Native American play. Um, Sagat. That's true. They did. Who's supposed to be like? Isn't he supposed to be Malaysian or something like that? Or, uh, yeah, something like that. But um, but was not. There was there was all <laughs> sorts of. It, basically, they were scraping the bottom of the barrel for actors at that time because they had so little money left to pay for it did you, this movie was like endorsed by capcom so yeah, capcom paid for most capcom, of it. capcom paid for it and they also have uh, reserved the right to make all the decisions with it which is uh something my bad st- like why weird stuff happened later um but anyway let's get back into the plot they're <laughs> m- mad at each other chun li's there and then we're introduced to ryu and ken they go to see Sagat in his like indoor fighting arena, arena, arena. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a renal. Um, and then we also one, one of the most ridiculous scenes in the movie ensues where they're selling they're selling guns. <laughs> yeah, they're selling the guns. They're selling guns, and these guns shoot tennis balls. And they were like picked them up and were like, "Ooh, look at these guns." And then picked them up and shot them at them. They were like, "Oh, tennis balls!" Yeah, because because they were like, "We're going to." Because you couldn't ki- tell that they shot tennis balls when they picked them right. up. Right? They were like, "We're going to kill you with the guns that you tried to sell us." And then they were like, "Oh, it's oh no, they they shoot tennis balls." That was the moment. Uh huh. That all my hope failed for this movie. <laughs> that was the moment when I just started being like, "Oh, this movie is going to be hilarious, isn't it?" Um. Fun- funnily enough, I um. I have access to like a, a Plex, Plex server that okay. has like a bunch of movies. Uh-huh. I saw this was on there and I was like, awesome. Not going to have to pay for it on Amazon. Nice. I still, so I went to, I went to go watch it. It was the, um, the mystery science theater 3000 or something equivalent. Oh, version of it. got it. Okay. So I, I kind of wanted to watch that, but I was like, ah, I can watch it later. You can watch it again now. This was, yeah, now, now I can, but now. this was for, this was for research, right. you know? Right. Research. And then yes. um and then so they fight, they they get caught by Sagat. Um and then they have to They make uh, Ryu fight Vega. They make Ryu fight Vega, who Vega spends the majority of the movie without his signature mask on. Like he has on in the beginning. And then he takes yeah. it off. And then But he always had even even when so um during that, they fight whatever. Uh, then they get caught by the U. The sorry, A N. The A N. Um, the Allied Nations. Not not the United Nations. Um, they get caught by Guile and the A N and sent to jail. When they're in jail, Vega makes like a shank version of his of his claws. His claw. It's so complicated. It's like just make a shank. <laughs> Why would you do that? Also, I love the fact in that first fight that they have. There's this whole the whole thing where Ryu like takes off his shirt and he's got all these muscles, and everyone's like, "Ooh, ooh, so yeah. sexy!" And then yeah, Vega's this, this all movie pissed would not off. Fly. <laughs> That's that, so uh, he's so pissed yeah. off that he's they like they think he's they're pretty Ryu, Ryu, Ryu is prettier than well, apparently, that's Vega. a thing. Like, he like ha- he's very proud of how he looks and like his character in general. Yeah. Like, that's so. true. So that's I think true. they might have just been trying to play that up. Um, there and then uh, they get captured. After they get captured, Guile says, uh, hey, listen, you guys are. Oh, Ken is there too. The whole movie is kind of like yeah, also Ken's, Ken's here. here. That's like, yeah, also Ken's here. <laughs> and there's like a and there's like the the thing where he's just like we were trained by the same master. Blah 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 blah. Um, and, and that's the end of that. yeah, and that's the end of that. And then basically they go in. Guile says, "Hey, listen, we need you to go undercover and then try and get in so we can find out where the base is for the stuff." And then the rest of the plot goes on. And then uh, Chun Li wants to kill Bison because he killed her her, her father. Uh, as well as Barog and Honda, uh, they're just kind of hanging out. They're just they're they're with her, like helping. They're, yeah, they're they're helping with Chun Li. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff. I think one of 
one of my favorite scenes is whenever uh, Sagat and um, M. Bison, and this really, this movie does a great job of like making Bison like cr- a crazy dictator because whenever he oh, tries yeah. to pay Sagat with the money, he's like, here <laughs> you go. It's like $3 million. And he's like, yes, bison it's bucks. a Bison bucks. <laughs> Because that's the currency of the future. Each one We're is worth five the queen, British, and then it's gonna... five British pounds, and because that's what they're gonna have to make it when we after we capture the queen. Yeah, <laughs> and it's what? just that's not how that works at that's all. That's not how it works. But <laughs> he's a crazy, he's a crazy man. So of course it works that way. And it's just so, it's just so much like that is the way that this person's brain would think. It's like, well, I'm gonna rule the world, so I can make my own currency because this is what's gonna be whenever, whenever I make it. So yeah. I love that. And then the really boring circus act <laughs> that follows. Yeah. Uh, that so Chun-Li and them do. Yeah. And then there's a part. So they, they do a whole thing. They basically blow up the circus, whatever. Yeah. And then and they there's still a get part captured. where they're like, ha. Yeah. No. How did they get captured? We didn't they were just suddenly captured. Can I tell you? <laughs> well, can I tell you why? There that- were so many points that happened that I was just like, wait, what? How did we get here? How did Chun Li just magically get to the circus? Where are we? <laughs> I actually I actually know why. Uh is because did they cut scenes? Well, it kind of. Uh because what uh what Stephen E. D'Souza, D'Souza the, uh, the director for this did was because they were really short on filming time. If they were going over, he would just tear out whole pages of the script. <laughs> like, so, uh, and then like later when they were cutting it together, he would be like, he would be like, Oh no, I, uh, we, we, we cut out the part with all the, di- with all the explanations for that. Uh, um, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> whoops. Uh, so, ooh, ah, Oh, I didn't mean to do it. Um, just a side note, uh, if you are, is Stephen E. D'Souza, the director of this, um, let's see, he also directed, uh, nothing, some TV movies, um, he, he directed seven episodes Arnold's of, Wrecking Crew Company, uh, a TV movie called Robot Monster Special Edition in 1982, Tales Ooh, from, he directed Tales from the Crypt, well, one episode of it in one episode, yeah, this wasn't the guy. I mean, yeah, probably not. This was not. not the guy for this. Probably not. Wow. Um And yeah, man, he just didn't do it. So yeah, we're missing a lot of plot. There's a lot of plot they just didn't put in it because they were running out of time. So they just didn't do it. Yeah, he uh, he did a bad job. Uh, not cut very well. It's it really isn't. There's a lot of like really fast ones. Oh, also there's a point whenever I, I I made a note of this in my brain because I was watching it. Whenever uh, Ryu and Ken get captured by Chun Li, Honda, and Balrog. Uh this like, is before they blow before up the they circuit. blow up this stuff. Um, Chun Li jumps. Uh, Ming Na Wen jumps out of a closet with a knife and runs into Ryu by accident with it, and you and it like bends in half. Like she jumps yeah, out that, and it like bends, so you're like, "Oh, that's a fake knife." Yep, that's yeah, it. that reminds me of the the. There was a sword in the the fight between Vega and Ryu, and you can tell it's just, it's yeah, bad. yeah, it's just it's, a it's just rubber. Um, let's talk about let's talk let's take a break and talk about the fighting in this movie. The movie's called Street or lack Fighter. Thereof. Yeah, there's almost no fighting in the movie. The best fight was definitely. Uh, uh, Honda versus uh, Zangief. Zangief and the the Godzilla. <laughs> I would everything that Zangief was involved in this movie is the best part of gold. this movie. Just gold, just just pure gold. Except for uh, like DJ. Oh was, oh oh! <laughs> with the when they were blowing up the thing, they they showed the car running down. Yeah, and, <laughs> and he's they like it changed the channel. He's like quick change the channel because he <laughs> thinks that's gonna stop. I laughed so hard at that. <laughs> Like I was by myself watching this movie, except for Sebastian was here with me, so he was like looking at me. He's like, "Why? Why do you?" Th-? He was like in dog. He was like, "Why do you think this is funny? <laughs> <laughs> Why watch a movie about fighting when the plot is so good? They fight with conversations," is what Gray says. Um, but the uh, yeah, he really was, and also whenever they're like D- DJs running away, was like, "We're the DJs," like we're the bad guys, and Sankey was like. We're the bad guys. 
you didn't know and that's his that's his turn that's his big turn when he's just like yeah. it's like i had no idea we were the bad guys yeah, also the fact great. that his and honda's fight stops because they're like hey man we gotta go and he's just like oh, okay see you man <laughs> <laughs> they just leave yeah honda's oh. like okay that was fun i gotta go now that was fun i gotta go now he's like oh man. Honda, i liked honda too honda was Even though, like not japanese but he was still fun yeah i mean the character uh, the character that they made it be was good the yeah. not the character like we i don't think we have to say this but the plot for this movie is not street fighter it's like, also nonsensical it makes zero sense the reason they drive that boat up to get to bison's uh compound is because they didn't have rights to that was supposed to be like pl- a plane like they were supposed to do a flying scene to get to bison's base but they couldn't get the rights to do the air like oh for real the air rights. so that's so they, the reason it was it was it that's was why it was a boat yeah and then uh and, then, and the, then the stealth part where they put their shield like their face mask down yeah and then went stealth and then put them back up it's like why are the, what, are the what did you what did that do why did they do that and then <laughs> uh and then the uh street fighter controls that uh bison's using to blow up all the mines in the water that was good I that was that really lot, that was actually. a good call out um, I think there was there were a lot of references in the movie that were pretty good. Um, I think the actually the last scene um, where they do like the jump. I'm pretty oh, sure that yeah. Katie mentioned that I, she thought that was most of like the actual like things when that they, they do when, when they, they win. do the jump. Are you talking? Oh, whenever they like, do the at the end, like right whenever like, they were like yeah, and that it says yeah. Street Fighter. Yeah. yeah, that's actually the that is the actual pose that all the characters do in yeah. like the Street Fighter Two tournament game. So yeah. like in the title card, you always see them doing those poses, and that's what that was. So yeah, so yeah, good. That was a good that's call. Cool. Um, but the fighting scenes were so bad. They were because the the choreographer, the fight choreographer, didn't know any of the references for what they were doing. Like he didn't so know the type of uh, the guy the the guy that Capcom hired for this. The Capcom, the creator of the game, hired for this, didn't know mm-hmm. the source material. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. I uh, also I also read they wanted it to be more of like a spy, like James Bond type thing, and yeah, less of, yeah. So uh. yeah, so basically, Charlie Piserni was the stunt coordinator, um, and. Um, he agreed there were problems because so Benny Urquidez, who was a world karate champion, he was the physical trainer for all of the cast. Um, also, they weren't very big, like outside of like Zangief and Honda, like who are big. Yeah. yeah. Like they're, they're not. Like, yeah. They were like, like average size people, people. Like, you know, pretty um, shredded, but like not like. So like basically, yeah, but basically the, the person, the, um, the trainer, was training them to fight and do these fight scenes but then halfway through filming they were like because D'Souza wasn't there for a lot of the filming of the fight scenes oh he was just hanging out he was like, hanging he was like off doing other stuff because they were so short on time so uh yeah so basically all of the characters he was teaching the fight and then they were like oh no these characters have to have different fighting styles because of where they are, like where they're from, you know, like Sagat's supposed to be an MMA fighter. No, right. There's not really anything like that in there. Um, right. Ryu, uh, <laughs> the, the fight between Vega and Ryu was that knife fight thing that they have. They do. Yeah. Um, he had no idea that was going to happen. Like the actor didn't know that was how the scene was supposed to go. And so he like until that day. So he had somebody train him in Thai like knife fighting techniques that day so he could look like he knew what he was doing. He doesn't they don't knife fight though. No, he only <laughs> does the little knife thing and then throws it. And I think that's the reason because they were like, Oh, it's supposed to be a knife fight. He was like, I don't know how to do any of this stuff. Cool. So really great. Really yeah. great. They did do a, a decent amount with uh, Chun Li doing kicks and stuff, which was nice. They did. They did. They didn't have any of the stuff where it was like, because what you want to see with Chun Li is like her thousand crane kick or whatever it is. The the one where she like she goes, hey, yeah, 
like the the, the fast kick to yeah. the yeah yeah where it's just like up at, it's like it's like head ch- like head chest abs. She also has like abs. a spin one too. That's true, and you can see there's like towards the end Ry- Ryu and Ken in their fight. Uh, Ryu does like a sort of like a Haruken. Yeah, like yeah, he did that. Yeah, and yeah, and, I saw and that. Like, and, like, the it green flashes flash. for a minute, yeah. so you're like, oh, like, oh what? There, there it is, there it there's is. There's that. And then Ken kind of does like an upper uppercut, which is his like sure you can, um, sort of uh, his sort sort of attack, and yeah. Vega does like twice in this tiny little room. They're fighting in this tiny little room, but they're like, oh, we have to do Vega's signature move, which is his roll and then stab with his claws, roll yeah. and then stab with the claws. So they did that in that tiny room, and it didn't really work. Yeah. Well, so. There's that. Who else? Guile does some of his like flying kick stuff. Cammy doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot. She says a lot of orders. Yeah, Cammy uh, was barely there. T Hawk was barely there. Barely there. Um, Balrog. I like the fact that whenever they're in, <laughs> they're in Bison's base at the end. So they're in Bison's base after like the ultimate, like the final Ultimo. Everybody's at Bison's base. Uh, Blanca's there because he's been transformed into a monster sort of person. Oh yeah, that whole subplot that that whole subplot that we barely know. They also had to throw Dal Sim in there, so um, so he was the, the doctor that like the nice doctor that didn't want to be doing that. But yeah, that didn't want to do it. Was I, being forced by Bison. I thought it was really interesting that he was like chained up around his neck and his hands, and that was there. Like, oh yeah, that's why he why he lost his hair. Eventually. Why yeah, and he lost his hair. And apparently there was like, again, there was supposed to be like more scenes with him in it because you can see like whenever he's es- there escaping, um, he has like some sort of like chemical on his arm where, and the- so it's like, oh, maybe it'll make his arms stretchy. Who knows? You know, that's the, but that's the whole point. Also, didn't you like whenever they were, whenever they were turning Blanca into Blanca, they had this giant thing that had very large labeled chemicals on it yes it was because it was so like it was like uh, you don't need those well, it was very clear it, it was very clear when you're watching it but i don't know as like medical professionals if you would need it to be <laughs> needed to be like that yeah it's yeah um so yeah they're in they're in this final ultimo everybody basically comes out to fight and then and then bison and, then and- it- yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Bison and Guile fight. Yeah. And it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, there's... The, I think that Bison... Bison basically does his attack where he, like, flies through and punches you. That's kind of the thing he kept doing over and yeah. over and over again. Yeah, with his with his boots. Mm-hmm. Yep. His light-up boots. I want those light-up boots, though. I want those light-up boots. Oh, this would be nice to have. Um, there's, but yeah, I mean, it was. Oh boy! As far as plot is concerned, there wasn't really a whole lot to say. It things happened in it. Um, there's a lot of. A lot of explosions. There's a lot of explosions. Somehow the the boat that they have that shoots that's like taking out the radar. Yeah. It ex- just explodes. It explodes. It yeah. shoots explosive bullets. Yeah, that's yeah, which that's is how it works. which is fine in the forty first millennium, but I I don't think that's very uh, accurate. Nineteen ninety four. You don't yeah, think that could happen in ninety four? Um. Hmm. Well. Well. All right. Um. There's a lot of stuff as far as the the trivia for the movie. What do you um, mean? Like, there's just like a lot of stuff that happened during shooting. That was like, there's reasons why this film didn't work. It was very much, it it could have, if they'd started shooting on time, they were six days. Oh, it was late. It was was... six days behind and or it started 10 days late and they were six days behind shooting basically the entire time. Why was that? Because they started late. I think it was mostly because they just didn't, D'Souza wasn't like, couldn't get everybody there because they shot in Australia Right, and um, b- to do that, they had to have someone from Australia in the movie, which is how Cammy. Yeah, that's was why. Kind of, you know. Yeah, that's why <laughs> they put her in, and it was like, all right, cool. Uh, but the 
uh, it was overseas. They had to stick to it needed to release on December 22nd. Like, uh, <laughs> how is the behind the scenes Street Fighter a better movie than the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, is there a behind the scenes street fighter thing i, I guess would I should love watch to that. i would love to watch yeah. that um but uh yeah i mean yeah because capcom co-financed it so every everything needed their approval so right, that's so also probably, why it's, there's probably a lot of red tape to get yeah, through and, and a lot of like anytime they wanted to do anything um they had to get they had to get approval for it um yeah and it was, I mean, it was just, there's so many things. All, all the cast was like fed up with JCVD's crap because he was, because he wasn't, he didn't know his lines. He wasn't doing stuff. You can even see whenever they're, whenever they're shooting the movie, like half the time his lines are either ADR or like half ADR or full ADR because. Yeah. You know, I wasn't sure when I was watching it, like. There seemed like a lot of dialogue that was added in later. I there there had to be because I, I don't think there was any ex- again. He was ripping out full pages of the script when they were behind, so yeah. we're just missing a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. and they also filmed in Thailand a bunch, and that wasn't great too. Um. Uh, yeah. There was, yeah, um, they wanted to, but Capcom wanted a Christmas release to tie in with merchandise for the holiday season. So they were, well, stuck and what's to funny schedule. is the, the anime that I, the anime movie I mentioned mm-hmm. before. Yeah. At the end of the credits, it mentions that this Street Fighter, the, the, the live action movie is filming right now. And I think it said it was going to be out in April that year. So it was already delayed after that. Oh my gosh. Too. Oh so, my gosh. Just a mess. Uh let's see. Uh and then um So yeah, I mean that's the plot of the movie. Of uh, uh, the eventually the good we guys got went, through, I mean we didn't I mean we didn't get through all of the specifics but like But you can you, you probably get the gist. You get like, the gist. It's like it's a movie where there's a It's a mess. It's it really <laughs> is. There's too much going on all the time. That's the biggest problem with the plot. Is there's just so much going on all the time. That it's like there's too many well, characters. <laughs> there's too many characters. They tried to introduce all of them a little bit, and therefore we cared about none of them. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like they and they just they just couldn't do it. They just and it wouldn't be like I think like honestly I think whenever Mortal Kombat came out two years later, they did a better job of having us care about the characters because there were kind of less of them, or because they put them on very like very specific teams you know right right there was like, this whole the good... subplot of like switching sides yeah it's like and... oh yeah we're the good guys and the bad guys oh we're not really good guys oh we're not really bad guys dj's a character in this movie um who basically didn't need to be there didn't need to be there he, he didn't... Hawk didn't need to be there cammy barely needed to be there like so they just threw everybody in they threw everybody from street fighter 2 into the movie and, well, they and like, the thing is, like, they had them all there the entire time. I think with right. Mortal Kombat, they had people just kind of show up for a fight, got defeated, and left. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, you didn't need... Like, especially because that early in Mortal Kombat, you didn't really need the in-depth, like, Sub-Zero, Scorpion sort of, uh, like... And Reptiles in there, too, I believe. Reptiles in there, too. But you didn't need like their specific. We don't need the whole backstory about them. They were just they were they were Boba Fett's. Yeah, they were just yeah. badasses. Yeah, they're just there to be awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. Apparently, this had uh, <laughs> there was a, the the firstly the first cut of the movie was rated R of it, so they had to uh, they had to cut a bunch of stuff down to make it a PG thirteen film, um, and then <laughs> they made it a G rating by accident so it was almost rated g um they basically gave guile they gave jcvd one expletive to say which boosted it up to a pg-13 rating jesus i know oh it's so silly the way that all this stuff happens i mean 
This is before like. I mean, there use there are PG movies that have a bunch of swearing in it. Like you, you know, like uh, the Goonies is PG, and they say and they say a bunch. Well, of yeah, the, there's like the whole thing stuff. that like you can use. Well, yeah, in the '80s, I feel like they were a little. They were think, a little. I'm pretty more sure lenient. Airplane is PG, which is ridiculous. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Ooh, airplane has no business oh, being PG. Speaking of Airplane, this isn't a bad movie, but I went to see Maverick yesterday with my father oh i've heard it's awesome it's so good you guys anyone who's listening right now go see top gun maverick it's just great it's and just i've heard great. it's unironically good like it's actually no it's good like it's a good movie uh like tom cruise did did the right thing you know whenever yeah. they were whenever they were producing it so of course, there's like legal battles about it now because I guess technically they were slightly outside their statute to use Top Gun, like the term, the term, because it's based on a guy who is Whatever. like that Maverick Top Gun sort of thing, and it, it had like a 35 year statute because it came out 36 years later. Blah. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, there's there's a lot of stuff. Um. In this movie, there is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in this movie. Uh, I I really think Raul Julia did a fantastic job. He had some of the he delivers his lines so good. He did in this movie. Um, yeah. We've talked before about the um, for you the day Bison Grace Your Village was the most important day of your life. For me, it was a Tuesday. Yeah, we've talked excellent about line. That. That's Great. cool. Um, there's the really stupid speech that uh guile gives yeah whenever. when they're about to leave yeah when I uh, did... the guy from fan of the opera comes yes and i did find <laughs> i did find that i did find that interaction humorous even though i didn't think jcvd was funny i thought the other guy was really funny um, yeah no he was great i mean he is great he's i like him yeah um and I don't know why you would push to get this movie out in 1994 when all these other really good movies came out in 1994. Yeah, so let's talk about other things. So what so what else what do we got in 1994? What's what are all the right. top movies from 1994, Chris? Shawshank Redemption. Oh god. Yep. Forrest Gump, Pulp yeah, Fiction, oh my god. Leon the Professional, The Lion King, uh Interview with a Vampire, Speed, The Mask. Speed Dumb came and out in 1994. Legends of the Fall. Oh, um, there's so many things that are so much better than this movie. Let's go to so where did this movie rank uh, um, on the list? So right now, uh, on IMDb's feature films uh, sorted by popularity ascending, um, and so basically all of these movies have at least a seven rating or better, and then we get down to number twenty. Seven, and it's a four point oh. Oh boy! It's surrounded by uh, a movie with an eight point oh. The Flintstones is two ahead, and that's a four point nine. The Flintstones. Uh, yeah. The Flintstones. Do you want to know something funny though? I do. So uh, the movie they spent thirty six million dollars on the movie. Also, Clerks came out in nineteen ninety four. Clerks did. They spent thirty thirty uh thirty four million dollars on the movie. Uh, domestic box office thirty three million dollars. So, I thought it was. I thought. I thought I saw that it was positive. That uh, oh, I see box office is ninety nine point four. Well, that's that's worldwide box office. Uh, yeah, we well, don't. We don't. Uh, typically, they don't consider it. Uh, it's not considered. It, it. They only look at domestic box office whenever they look at like, oh, how did the movie do? I mean, it's uh, According to its Wikipedia, it says the film was commercially successful. It was. I mean, honestly, it was. It almost made its budget back, which is more than it should have done, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I think that it came out because of the Street Fighter tie-in and because Jean-Claude Van Damme was in it. I think that's the only saving graces that this movie probably. had yeah, um, probably. in 1994. Of course, it did, like with the worldwide box office, it did very, it did pretty darn well. So I think Capcom wasn't upset by it. Yeah. I mean, I'd be upset by it. But I think that if something like this came out today, or even like Doom, which came out 10 years later, 11 years later, mm -hmm. 
because of the internet, people would have not gone to see it. People only went because they were like, oh, John Claude Van Damme's in there. He's well, he was awesome in Bloodsport. Oh, it's yeah. Street Fighter. Let's go see it. You know what I mean? Like, whereas like now with the internet, we're like, oh, it's trash. I'm not going to go see it. So uh, in 1994, the movies at the box office, this one ranked uh, as far as domestic domestic gross. Um, this ranked 26th. Um, it just beat out The River Wild. Uh, which I have no idea. I don't know that movie. I have no idea what movie that is. Um, and it was beaten out by another Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, Time Cop. <laughs> Time Cop. Time Cop, man. Is a, Woo! Time Cop is a terrible movie. I've never seen it. Uh, oh, you should watch Time Cop. It's bad in the best way. Um, but it did beat... It. Did, Street Fighter did beat The Little Rascals. Um, it beat The Little Rascals? It beat The Little Rascals. It beat The Crow. Um, that was the one where the dude died, right? It was. That was uh, uh, Brandon Lee, who was Bruce Lee's son, uh, died on that. And it also led to more uh, more strict w- control policies on film sets. Um, which so, is good. Which is good. good for a bad reason. But it's unfortunate uh, because he was going to be great. And then we lost him. Um, this also did beat out D2 The Mighty Ducks. Uh, I hope you know. D2 The Mighty Ducks was 37th uh, on the year. Um, the Lion King was the was the top grossing movie in 1994. That's not surprising. Disney! The Lion King, so, Forrest Gump, and True Lies. <laughs> Those are the th- top three movies of 1994. That makes sense. I'm... I don't... Yeah, so, yeah I mean, Gray, because... till, till that happened, but that's also not... That wasn't him. That was, uh, a, again, that was a smaller movie where people weren't doing what they were supposed to do. So mm-hmm. that was, uh, that's completely the fault of the uh, director of the film for that, um, which we have seen before. So that's so, sad. Anyway. Jean Claude Van Damme didn't really do much after this. Well, he did, but like, he basically became a direct to video. Yeah, yeah, he was a he was a, he was a direct to video. Um, uh, he was a, yeah, yeah. It was just all the little action movies, and he probably made a lot of money. He made a lot of money from that, sure like he did, from just like, doing like little tiny things. And he's like, he's like, I'm Jean Claude Van Damme. Just give me money, you know. Um, yeah. So there it is. There's the mon- There's the numbers. That's the money. That's where all the money comes from. Now the question is, Chris, the big question. How many Hadoukens? How many whatevers? The it's a it's a game brew patented game brew rating system. I'm gonna go with Hadoukens. I'm gonna go with um We really need to keep record of um what we're doing with these. Oh, like the number that we give it? Yeah. I mean I've of... got it. I've got it's I they're posted on the thing. I'll look it up later. It's at the end yeah, of the I, thing, so all I have to do is listen to the true. end. Um <laughs> I think I'm gonna give it uh four Hadoukens out of ten. Four out of ten Hadoukens. You know, honestly, it was pretty bad, but I enjoyed watching it. Like I had a fun time while I was watching it. So I think I'm gonna give it I think I'm gonna give it roughly ten million out of 20 million bison bucks okay yeah yeah <laughs> i ten- like that inflation yeah i um, mean yeah it's that's how it works <laughs> um so how would you compare this to uh to to doom i i would say that I, doom go ahead actually i asked you so me, I well i'll go then i'll go, yeah, first. go first yeah i'll go, yeah, first. go first i think this was a much better movie than dune doom really yeah, because Do you Doom think it was a better movie. Or did you enjoy it more? I enjoyed it more, but I also think that it was they did more with the IP because Doom was Doom was more like let's make a movie about Doom, you know. But it wasn't. Yeah. It didn't use Doom. It was like let's make a movie that is Doom, but it wasn't. It wasn't like they didn't take the stuff from Doom and put it in the movie. They kind of used it. But it wasn't. Doom. I feel like they did the same thing here, though. But even then, but even I don't know. I maybe it's because there wasn't much street fighting. Well, but it's true. <laughs> That's true. But maybe it's the fact that it was like more campy. 
I think that this yeah. was a lot campier than um, Doom was, and that made yes. me like it more. Because okay, I can it, see that. Because it wasn't it, it wasn't trying to be serious. It wasn't trying to be a serious movie. It was trying to be a Street Fighter movie, not sure. doing a great job. And then, um, and, and but still making a lot of money. So yeah, I I mean I think with the Doom movie, it uh, I think it made more sense, sort of. The plot like, made more sense. The yes. plot made more sense. Yes, like as a complete package, I think it was better. But like, this was more fun to watch. Yeah, it was. And like, and that's kind of that where... wasn't. Yeah, Doom wasn't fun to watch. There was like it was too serious. The only the only part that was kind of cool was the the first person part, like yeah. And this one, there was there were cool parts that all throughout, in in the way that it's cool sometimes to go to a circus and see a clown. Yeah, <laughs> but but I don't think all like, clowns. I don't want clowns all the time. <laughs> I don't want clowns all the time. <laughs> It's like if you're a clown at a circus, that's fine. That's where you're supposed to be. If you're in the real world, you stay the hell away from me. Um, <laughs> the all right, There's well, too many clowns in this world already. The only <laughs> get the clowns out of here. Um, well, I mean, the only thing that we have to do now is kind of figure out what what's next. What's next? What's next? Um, so if I mean, if we're keeping it to be bad movies, um. I mean, definitely just, go watch. Definitely go watch the Street Fighter Two animated movie. Right, it's good. Yeah, okay. And I think it's I think it's free on on Amazon right Ooh, now. That's nice. You have Amazon Prime. That's nice. So it's not actually free, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, it's actually pretty cool. Um, so there's that. But um, yeah. Next movie. I mean, it's there's Mario, which is bad. We could Super Mario um, is bad. I mean, we, it Mario's doesn't necessarily bad. have to be a bad movie. But we could go get into the whole. Uh, <laughs> I think I mentioned this, the Yui Bowl stuff. I, I think that's just going down a. That's just going down a weird. <laughs> Ooh, Resident oh, Evil. Oh, we could watch the first Resident Evil movie. We're gonna. We should leave it up. Let's pick two, and we'll let the people decide again. You know, okay. we'll let um, the people. The people. We, sh- we should. We should let Street Fighter rest for a little bit before we. Yeah, do no the, uh... Street Fighter stuff. <laughs> the um, Legend of Chun Li, but um, so mm. Resident Evil. Let's do that one. Resident Evil. Okay. Ooh, should we do? Ooh, should we do female action protagonists? So Resident Evil and Tomb Raider. Ooh yeah. Um, and then let people pick. Oh, there's a House of the Dead movie. I can't. Why? I can't imagine. I can't imagine why they would make that. Are Max Payne and Far Cry Yui Bowl? No, Max Payne was John Moore that did that. Um, I think let's just keep it. Let's keep it at action, ladies. So Tomb Raider. Which one? The first, it's going to be the first one. We have to do the With, first iteration. But, but there's also the reboot. I have never seen the reboot. But I completely forgot about until I was looking at this. I was thinking uh, of the one with Angelina Jolie in it. Right, because, that's the one I originally thought of too. Because I just uh, watched uh, Mission Impossible, the first one, and John nice. Voight's in that. And anytime I see John Voight, I'm like, it's amazing that Angelina Jolie is, <laughs> is that. Came means, from that. Came from that. <laughs> You know, it's definitely not the genes that she like was not the predominant genes there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I was I'm looking at a list of um <laughs> of movies and I was like, what is Alone in the Dark? Here we pull. Um <laughs> of, course it is. Uh, of course it is. All right. Yeah. So let's just do so Lara Croft Tomb Raider. Yep. And um and uh Resident Evil. The first yep. one. Yep. So those will be our choices. Uh, and then we will uh, reconvene in two weeks to discuss it. Remember Sounds to good. listen to the Game Brew podcast. Uh, you can listen to this later, too, if you want to listen to what you just listened to again. Or if you're listening <laughs> to the first time now, hi. Um, otherwise, 
again, there's really no sign off for this bi week game view podcast. So I'm going to say what I said last time, which is, uh, we'll see you.